This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's a fabulous, almost spring day. Not, it's officially spring, but we don't feel it totally. But here in Denver, and my guest is also from the Denver area, so we have some sun. There is basically no snow on the ground, although our East Coast listeners are still dealing with it, the white stuff. Um, And we're going to be dealing with focusing on really one of the, I think, hot topics that's going to be at the Author You Extravaganza May 1 to 3 here in Denver, Colorado. And all our listeners, I sure hope you get signed up, register, and come. I will give you a secret code that you can get $100 off on registration at the bottom of the hour. But one of the things that authors consistently screw up on, and it is a screw up, is that they don't know how to pitch themselves. They don't know how to pitch their book. They stumble, they stutter, they go off in perpetuity without getting focused into the point. So that's one of the things that we're really going to be talking about today, as long as, as well as really some of the creations of books, because our guest is both a multiple and award-winning author, and she's also very good at narrowing in on focusing. So let's bring on Mary Jo Fay. She's a, actually a highly respected relationship and dating guru. She refers to as the voice of dating, mating, and relating. And she's got a master's degree in nursing along with a Ph.D. So she really brings back some of the school of hard knocks in her own life as well as what she has seen working with a variety of other people. So with that, as we tell you about some of her books from Please Dear Not Tonight, The Truth About Women and Sex, When Your Perfect Partner Goes Perfectly Wrong, and Get Out of Your Box, and certainly her most recent one, which we'll talk a little bit about, called Blatant Deception. What Mary Jo is going to be talking about is how to become pitch perfect at the extravaganza. And she'll be speaking about how to put it together, what are some of the key points, what are the hiccups, and it'll be a very, very interactive workshop. So with that said, Mary Jo, welcome to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so let's just jump into this. Um, well, I, I should tell you, first of all, my PhD is a hard-learned one of, of uh, out in the dating world. The master's is nursing, the PhD is the hard knocks one. So but between both of those, uh, it's a pretty good mix. I guess people look to me because I've been down that road and and, uh, and, and teaching classes that I teach about dating and my meetups and whatnot. It, uh, it brings us back to lots of different opportunities as well when you're talking to authors not just having a one-point book, this is my book and everybody's going to want my book. You need to have the ability to spread your talents out to other ways, and that's where your pitch becomes so important. If you can't explain who, who you are and what you do in 30 seconds or less, you're going to miss opportunities everywhere. Well, that's true, and I've told people with even their book titles, if you really study the uh, New York Times bestsellers, that those are almost all at the top of the list eight syllables or less, which really does tying in with the pitching. You've got to grab them quickly and maintain it. And I know you and I have been in rooms together where we've actually rolled our eyes together because the author just couldn't get to the point. And what happens is they lose a a potential buy of their book because they can't hook it into what they they ease the pain or fill the need or whatever the blank is that their book and they will do. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I think with our technology today where everything is so fast, you know, if I pull up my email and, and there's uh, a uh, article I want to, you know, I see that I want to open and I go to open it, if it takes more than five seconds, I leave it. 
So that's how we are on the receiving end of information. So when people are, are pitching their books, and of course they've put 300 uh, pages or 100,000 words or whatever into all this time of this book, it's, it's their baby and it's, there's so much to it. They want you to know everything. And what I like people to think about as they start grasping the concept of pitching is to pick up a TV guide and look at how TV guide can put in one sentence what that two-hour movie is about. And when you can get yours to be on that kind of basis, the thought process, then you're heading in the right direction to a pitch. Well, I think that's a great tip to think, I mean, if they still can get their hands on a TV guide. And, of course, if they're well, looking at their, uh, at their menu tree in a, a, a Sunday newspaper or in any kind of guide, it usually doesn't have – uh, a lot of information, although if you're watching, I, I guess I was watching something that uh, um, on our DVR type of thing where it actually gave you maybe two sentences right. about what the show is about, which is really what you're talking about. Can right. you do it in two sentences or less, which will bring you yeah. into about 15 seconds. And not two complex sentences that are four paragraphs long. You know, I've seen people try to do that, but it was, it was only two sentences, but they had to read it. And it took five minutes because that's how they put the punctuation in to make sure they got everything still back in that. Um, the other thing you can do is go to IMDB. That stands for um, Internet uh, M -M Database, Internet Movie Data Database. So it's IMDB.com. And you can uh, pull up any movie that you're thinking of. So I'll pull up Secretariat. And it will give you the log, they call it a log line in the movie industry, a one possibly two sentence summary of what that movie is. And that's how you want to start looking at your stuff. Because I've seen people, I'll say, okay, what's your book about? Well, it's about a girl and she's a teenager and she's really from another world, but she's in this world, but she doesn't know she's from another world. And in the other world, people find her and she has to run and, she, you know, and they go on and on and on. And they lost me after about, you know, five seconds of that. Whereas if they would have just said, you know what, it's a, it's a teen book filled with suspense from a teenager from another world trying to fit into this one, period, end of story. Then it should be interesting enough that the people you're pitching to go, really? Well, why, what world is she from? And then you can go into, you know, additional little explanations of what this is about without dragging your big saga story out when you don't even have it down to memorizable, you know, boom, 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 this is my book. That's your key right there. And and that's and it. We should also say to all our listeners, it's not something that you pick up in a nanosecond. Right. It, it it's just not that. It's not that nanosecond thing. It does take practice. I mean, you and I did a workshop together, where we had them what for three hours. We were working with them, and a couple of them actually got it together, and it was very interesting. Because we saw them maybe what a month later, and uh, and those uh, maybe one or two held on to it, but most of them regressed and went back to their old way. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I was just crushed when I saw that. But you know, I think as writers, we're just we're so into our words. I mean, words to me are power tools. They're my power tools. I love them. But if you can't condense everything down to the, the quick time frame that everyone is working with right now, especially if you're going to pitch to, uh, let's say, a news show. Right now there's um, there was a deal in the news on Monday about a guy communicating online, deceiving uh, a young kid in Loveland, I think it was here, um, pretending to be a 15-year-old boy. And that kind of sort of ties into my blatant deception book. So I have right now you know, put together a pitch for the news the real news people going, hey, you know, this isn't just a one-time deal. This is going on everywhere. Let me tell you about it. And, you know, boom, boom, boom. Here's three bullet points, and that's it. Because that's all they'll read. They aren't going to read more than even two or three sentences, much less two or three paragraphs. Yeah, and my and part of the pitch, just thinking offhand, I, I, I didn't see the headlines with a 15-year-old boy. But I would maybe pick it up with what does, and blank, 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 this news story have to do with, with, with the book Blatant Deception, and then I would period, and then the next word would be everything, period, and then I would say call me. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Excellent. All right. So, so with that kind of example, as you listen in, you can see it's short, it's succinct, 
it has something a little, um, um, I, I don't want to say sassy, salty, but it has a little intrigue or you're looking for that aha that will make the ear perk up. So they will say, wait a minute, tell me more. Because one of the purposes of a pitch for all of you listening in is that when you get out your first line or two, it really is supposed to throw out the invitation, the gauntlets out there, tell me more. I'm interested. You got my attention. That's right. the purpose. Uh, the funniest thing I ever had happen um, as I was learning this this branding pitching stuff, and, and let me define here just a little bit. There's branding. Now, if you think of uh, the Bulldog on Target, that, that's their brand. The McDonald's Arches, that's their brand. Um, Nike's swoosh symbol, that's their brand. So you can have a brand just as well, and that's kind of uh, – that identifies you. That's my – I'm the voice of dating, mating, and relating. That's my brand. Now, my 30-second commercial – is going to go into saying, you know, what I do with that. So I, I work with middle-aged singles, helping them to improve their dating success and increase their intimacy. That's the 30-second commercial. But a pitch can be totally different for whoever you are pitching to. If you're pitching to the news media, it might be on this story, so I have to encapsulate it to fit this story. Um, if it's on uh, Valentine's Day and I'm trying to pitch uh, a TV person about something Valentine's, it's going to be a different pitch. So my brand will still be the same. And the, the most fun thing that ever happened to me that really helped make this a visual, I went to a uh, uh, conference for authors. It was how to build your platform and, and design your pitch and whatnot. And um, I worked with the, with the guy in charge, and we were each supposed to go up and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, and this is you know, what my book, blah, blah, blah. And so he helped me kind of carve out my niche with that one particular topic. And so I said, hello, my name is Mary Jo Fay. I'm the author of Please Do Not Tonight, The Truth About Women and Sex. And I help men get more sex from their mates. And the child psychologist man in the room, his chin dropped to the floor. He leaped out of his chair. He pulled his wallet out of his back pocket. He pulled out all the money in it and ran over to me and slapped it down and said, sign me up. All that, right, and with what that, you want to do for a pitch. With, with that, we're going to take a quick break here because that's exactly what we're demonstrating here. Get their attention. Tell me more. I need it. This is Judith Riles. Mary Jo Fay is my guest today, and we're talking about pitching you and your book. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with? If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful picture tells a story and it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover nick selinger and nz graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors independent and traditional publishers for years he has developed a reputation for Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including 
Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me today is Mary Jo Fay, and we are talking about pitching you and your book and the, the where, when, how, and how to structure it so you don't sound like someone who is gazing at your belly button and really are basically incoherent, which is frankly what my experience is when I ask an author, I, when I meet them, tell me about your book. Five, ten minutes later, they're still talking about their book. And what I really wanted was something 15 to 30 seconds. And maybe I need to say, maybe this is my fault. I need to say, tell me about your book in 15 seconds. Well, that will probably put them into zombie land (laughs) because they can't do it. Anyway, my guest is Mary Jo Fay. Mary Jo will be speaking at the Author You Extravaganza um, May 1 to 3 here in Denver. And if you want to see the full setup of, of that who we're having in from Mark Coker to John Kramer, who will be our guest next week, to uh, Stephanie Barco, who has been ranked as the number one literary publicist in the U.S. for several years, that you'll have it all laid out. Just go to authoru.org, click on the uh, events tab, and then the extravaganza, and the whole thing will roll out. Okay, so Mary Jo. That if we we come back to not putting them into zombie land, um, what are what are some of the steps that we can do to get ourselves set up to move into creating a pitch that is not well, something that goes on in perpetuity? I think uh, we're going to be uh, spending some time with with my presentation at the extravaganza, working with the people at your table. Because it's getting a little brainstorming session going on that we'll usually find things when, you know, we can we all seem to be able to have a better handle on doing everybody else's um, projects. But when it's our own project, it always seems to be much harder. So throw in, you know, five or six people at a table and tell them what your stuff is and come prepared with what you think is your 30-second pitch. And then we'll help you tear it apart and start it out and build a new one all over again. But it's, it's getting those ideas. I mean, there can be a thought process that you have going on thinking that your brand is taking you down one path when it means something clearly different to somebody else. So you might be giving off the total uh, opposite of what you're even thinking you're doing. So you, you, you play around with it. It's not static. Um, different companies, if you watch them, you know, Target and their dog and their Target uh, red and white is in everything they do. And the color red is in everything they do. Just like Judith, you you know, your purple is in everything you do. And, and that becomes part of who you are and part of your brand. So how you put that into making it a, then a statement is the second part of it. And, and it becomes something that you have to try on. You know, you really have to try on. Um, I, my latest book, Blatant Deception, I kept thinking for the longest time, how am I going to package this? instantly into a really quick synopsis. And what I came up with is it's 50 shades of gray meets an internet dating predator. Now that's about as concise as you can get. And I'm Mm -hmm. still toying with that because I think I need to make it even more powerful because I'm having people that aren't a hundred percent following that. This is not Mary Poppins I'm writing about. This is a very dark, um, nasty, evil man who's interacting as someone else online to pull in this unsuspecting victim of love. So it, it needs to be that concise. And, and I kind of laugh, you know, you're alluding to the people that we taught um, this topic a few months ago. 
And then at one of the uh, weekend uh, brunch meals, I guess you, you must have mentioned to them that they'd have a, a one minute to express who they were and what they were doing. And so one of the gals stood up and she just kept talking and talking and reading and reading. And I went over to her later and I said, um, I thought we'd kind of given you some ideas on how to shrink that. And she said, yes, but she gave me a whole minute, so I wanted to fill it. So that's not your point. Your point is not don't fill that minute. Cut it down even further, 30 seconds. And if you can do it in 15, that's even better. So you don't need to fill the space. You need to scrunch the space. And that's what's hard for us writers to do when we use 400 pages to write a book. Exactly. That's exactly right. So, um, you know, that's really what we're, we're, we're working on, but they still struggle. Right. All right. I think you need to sit down and do some things like make some lists. Um, I, at least this is what works for me, and I'm a, I'm a word person, so it helps. But um, make a list like uh, in, in 100 words or less, who, and, who are you and what are you about? So I'm an author. I'm a relationship expert. I'm an expert on narcissism. I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that. And then the second thing you might do is um, what are your books about? You know, just write it all out, and then who are you? Start with different things like this. This is a perfect little example right here to start your your brainstorming with. Write this down. Hi, my name is blank. I helped blank by showing them how to blank. In other words, hi, my name is Mary Jo Fay. I help middle-aged singles by teaching them to date smart. So write down everything you do and then circle the words for the things that are the most important for you to get at when you're meeting somebody. I mean, the 30-second elevator pitch is called that because if you're trapped in an elevator with someone for 30 seconds, that's an ideal sales pitch spot. You might run into that person later. You never know. I'm handing my business card out all the time. I've even told to the FedEx man that came to my house delivering a FedEx package. So you can pitch anywhere. You never know when that pitch is going to make or break anything that you're trying to pursue. So it's got to be good and it's got to be fast. Exactly. And it's got to be, well, it's got to have a snap to it. I think all yep. pitches have got to have some snap and the snap could be a subtlety. But it's the grabber. It's the grabber that tweaks me, pulls me in, and 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 I and I'm you know I it, it's like it's you know it's like fishing, Mary Jo, that you throw that line out and you you know you're you're hoping that that, that you want to get the hook and you start as as if I'm the pitcher that I'm going to start reeling it in and bringing them in until you catch it, just like your analogy with the guy who who you're speaking about what he was doing and and he couldn't get get up to you fast enough with his wallet open throwing money at you yeah and the funny thing was i really wasn't thinking of doing that particular kind of program i was i was working on something else at the time so i came back to my my dating meetup group here that i have and i said guys i need some guinea pigs i want to put together this program so 13 of my guys showed up i put together this three-hour program on how to get better sex from your mate and they went back to the group and were talking about it. And then the women came up to me and said, how, when are you going to do class for us? And I went, oh, didn't even think of that. And uh, frankly, I get more uh, mileage in my meetup programs in terms of people uh, bringing other people in, paying a fee every month, um, buying books, the whole deal, than just trying to pitch my book. It's, there's so many other ways that you can get out there and, and make yourself um, known to the world, whether it's a radio show or it's a pitch in the TV news, or if you can be in a newspaper, or if you can just cause some event yourself. But you've got to be, the thing about branding it and having this uh, tagline and whatnot is if you have this so down pat in your, in your mind, it's not like it's huge, you have to memorize three paragraphs, but it should just be automatic. It should just come out of your mouth. I tend to say, I'm Mary Jo Fay. I'm the voice of dating mating yes that does imply sex and relating and people go what <laughs> and then that opens the door to conversation mm -hmm. so you need to find something that's snappy that's quick that you can use everywhere that can be on your business card that can be on your website that can be in your signature that's why it's not five paragraphs long it's just a couple of sentences max yeah. and you know we're actually talking mary joe of tying this into what's called taglines that yep. people will use that direct. So taglines do go on business cards. They do go on your, your social media um, related areas. And one thing that's very important is to understand 
what are the specific keywords that also will attract people to your specific, if it's a genre or expertise or whatever it is the pitch is about, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So now, that, the other thing critical. to keep in mind, though, is that you may have to change your pitch based on who you're um, working with. For example, one of my um, strong topics that I'm very involved in is about dealing with narcissistic people. Um, my book's called When Your Perfect Partner Goes Perfectly Wrong, The Survivor's Guide to Loving or Leaving the Narcissist in Your Life. And I um, got my, myself a spot speaking on a cruise ship. And I was supposed to do three topics during the week, and then I got some, you know, big discount on the room or whatever it was. And what they reminded me when I brought up the narcissism angle is that most people on that cruise ship were going to be couples and families. So I shouldn't talk about breaking up families and bad, you know, relationships and all of that. So I took my same stuff, retweaked it, and called it dealing with difficult people because everybody knows a difficult person. So your your pitch and your brand and all of those things have to be something that can be flexible based on the situations you're in. But in your case, you're talking about behaviors. So, and as, as you know, behaviors cross over in a variety of different areas. All and right. so, you know, changing that title did work. Um, you had, and I don't know if we'll have enough time before we go to our next break, but I, I'd like to get into this in, in a minute and we can carry it over when we come back again. But what about, um, you know, static? You know, do, do you, you, you talk about changing it, but do you change your basic pitch from time to time? Um, if it's working or not working. I mean, I understand changing it in the scenario, but what about maybe you're tired of it? <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, I've been through that too. I've had several evolutions of mine. I mean, I started out with one book called Get Out of Your Box. So everything I did was based around the concept of getting out of your box. And my website's out of the box and my company is out of the box. And then I started adding narcissism things. And I started adding sex things. And now I'm, you know, the straight nurse that gives you the straight talk about sex and so it's nothing is uh, forever the same. Certainly you want to stay pretty consistent where you can. And if you look at the TV commercials, most things are pretty consistent, except the one thing that always makes me smile. Is okay, Geico. and then hold that. You get to hold that because we're going to have to break. <laughs> so this is Judith Bryles, Mary Jo Fay is with me. We're talking about pitching you and your book on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount from the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. 
Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty. So pitching, pitching, pitching. And Mary Jo and I, Mary Jo and Faye is our guest today. She's a multi-award winning author. And she will be doing a presentation at the Author You Extravaganza May 1 to 3. And when we were brainstorming this, that it one of the things that really became so... Um, paramount at last year's extravaganza was the a lack of ability of authors, even polished authors, the authors who were doing well, who couldn't say succinctly what their book was about, and they couldn't say succinctly who they were about. So we felt that we really needed to bring a presentation that would be interactive, would be a kind of a hands-on um, uh workshop at the extravaganza which is basically presentations workshops um it's it's not a pitch fest it's an info fest i like to call it so i would encourage all of you to go to it and here is the magic code to save a hundred dollars off friday saturday registration you go to authoru.org and then you click on the events tab and then it'll scroll down extravaganza and what you want to do is when you register, you put in AUEX100. That would be Author U Extravaganza 100. AUEX100, and that will save you $100. So, Mary Jo, with, with the kind of steps that you go through, because there's, there's kind of a game plan here as you're building up and they're brainstorming, people will be brainstorming amongst themselves. Because there is great power in, in getting somebody else's ears and input that you're so stuck that you're you're unable to see or go there. Mm -hmm. But they may come Very up much. with what I call a fabulous wacky idea that, yeah. <laughs> that, will, that will take you in a different area, which is good. And that um, there 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 is so some things, some steps to think about when you're putting together your pitch, some clues that will come in. What would be some of those? Well, um, as you heard of mine, dating, mating, and relating is kind of rhymy. And even though people frequently won't remember all three of them, they'll usually remember two of them. And they'll see me in the, in the elevator and they'll go, well, you're the dating, relating person, right? So you want it to be something memorable. And in that particular case, the rhymy part of it um, helps me. Alliteration is another one. You know, I talk about desperate daters or um, things like that, that you can use alliteration and that people tend to remember that kind of thing a little more. Succinct, we've talked about that over and over and over and over. I can't stress that enough. Um, make it fun, you know, make it something. I, I used to love the uh, the Mazda um, little boy brand that said Zoom Zoom all the time. And I ended up buying a Mazda car, which I never thought I would have done, and I actually bought a sports car. But Zoom Zoom was their kind of thing, so it was fun. It was a little boy watching the car go fast. Although I don't, I don't see him anymore. They still use Zoom Zoom, but they kind of got rid of him. Um, uh, and Judith and I were just talking about Geico. I think Geico is one of the companies that sort of breaks the rules of branding where they do something different so many times. I almost watch it just to see what they're doing this time because it might be the caveman, it might be the, the gecko, it might be something else completely. So their brand is almost being different um, frequently. So it's, it's, part, it's like creating a piece of art. It's like creating your book all over again. 
you know, what got you interested in your book, what makes you passionate about your book, um, make uh, words. And one of the things I do when it comes to alliteration is I'll get a dictionary out and uh, I'll say, okay, I want to have a, a something right, you know, in the, in the D's. I want desperate daters. I want deadly daters. I want, what else can I find? And I'll go through a dictionary and just look through the letter D all the way from front to back and see if there's something I can put in there that will make that even more powerful. So it's a word game. It's if you're if you guys are good at um, Scrabble, <laughs> this is probably a good way to take the next step. But it's all about your company, so it's really, really, really important. But but let me say, since you brought up Scrabble, one of the things that Scrabble aficionados do is they come up with some wacky words for their word count. Um, right. Don't use words or phrases that you need a PhD to understand. Right. It, you, you've got to keep it in the common, the commonality to help people out. And, and uh, you'll, you'll see that all over the place on that. that. I and mean, Mary Jo and I were also talking about during the break about there's a, a, a variety of other commercials. There's a, there's a pig running around. You've got flow and the, and the, you know, the gotcha. insurance side of it. And there's, um, I, I think one of the most successful ad campaigns that really did that pitching was Frontier Airlines many years ago, where right. they used all the animals and their really snappy, sassy sayings that they had, their dialogue back and forth with each other. And right. again, it would do what Mary Jo, what you said, that they would go back. People would watch, as you are doing, where, where the gecko is going to jump up next, that people would say, well, what, what's the critter going to do next and who's going right. to be next? And that's very effective. So that, that combines the brand. You bring yourself in. It, it combines that, that really um, a commercial for yourself, and it combines that pitch. But they're different. There is a different component for each of them. Well, and, an, and another example that I've had just huge success with, it was just has stunned me completely. Um, being a nurse, I, I ran across an article that was in a, a medicalnewstoday.com several years ago, and it was uh, it was badly written about narcissism. And so I contacted Medical News Today and said, you know, I'd like to, send, I'd like to write a, a counter stance to what you just had up there. And they said, sure, send it in. So I wrote this, um, keeping in mind that the people that were the readers in that group should have been physicians predominantly. And I called it Narcissism Victim Syndrome, question mark, a new diagnosis, question mark. I coined that term. That term is now used everywhere. I came up with that term. So you can change the direction of where things go, you know, if you get in the right place with the right words and the right catchiness. And it's always fun to, to see things come back at me saying, yes, she's, she suffers from narcissism victim syndrome. I'm like, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I did that. So you too can change directions of your your genre, your topic, if you can come up with some of the words and terms that you can make up to do this. So, and you might want to think if you do take direction and you really come up with a killer phrase, you may want to consider trademarking it. Absolutely. You know, I bet you wish you had, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Although, and, and my, my uh, products have evolved from my out-of-the-box book through the narcissism thing, which was really huge for a while. And quite frankly, I just got really tired of it because people that are in narcissistic relationships are just incredibly worn down and they're depressed and they're sad and they're angry and they're enablers and they're codependents. And then they get me on the phone and I just, their energy started wearing me down. So I started connecting with how to help people that were single, go back out and find a better mate. And so I've twisted it around. So dating, mating and relating still covers all those topics, but that's not the one I want to put so much emphasis on anymore, even though it still, you know, pays the bills as the books go out the door. So you have to be flexible, but you encapsulate what it is you're doing um, if it's more than one book or one title or one direction. Well, then, you know, that brings up the area because before you're breaking, you were talking about the various things that you, you know, you evolved of. You're, you're dealing with your out of the box is all about change and breaking uh -huh. out and doing things different. And then you kind of, you know, circled around and you evolved into other things on the relationship side. And now here you have this kind of um, salty and um, e this book about this evil, evil person who's in doing the cyber seduction side of it. Mm -hmm. That that so how what do authors to do? And I think one of the things that pitching does involve 
And this is where the branding comes into play. Which way do you go? Do you have a website for everything? And I'm going to suggest you do not. And one of the things I think is very important, you've got to go with your name. If you're the name, you're the brand, and you just have these different skills of expertise that you write about. Right. And so that's... Now, I also have several names on my website. So if I was doing a, an interview on something really specific that I wanted people to remember that name, like narcissism victim syndrome or whatever, I, I've got web titles that I can send them to that. If I want to send them to um, Seven Secrets of Love, I've got sevensecretsoflove.com, but it all goes to my main website. So if there's mm -hmm. something that's easier for people to remember, and it's not, you know, I've done that for a while, and I'm, I'm gradually making the switch over to maryjoefay.com. But in the meantime, those things have helped me on many occasions. The narcissism one was called helpfromsurvivors.com, and that was attached to that narcissism victim syndrome. And people, you know, had an image of that, that they, they were going to come and find help. So that had a certain thing um, that was really important at the time. Mm -hmm. So if, if I would come back and just do, let's do some summary here. Um, that if you were, and I, we've mentioned it multiple times, the branding, the commercials, and the pitches, and, and actually the pitch, is that branding is going to be more like a name, a commercial type mm -hmm. name or whatever it is, and it really specifically is going to be very succinct, short, um, like you use Nike, which is just do it, and they have their swish, and everyone mm -hmm. knows when they see it or they hear it, that means Nike. Um, mm -hmm. And then with your 30-second pitch, that's going to be that elevator pitch that you're talking about, and it, it'll vary. It, it mm -hmm. can vary with the audience or the situation, and again, the, then your succinct pitch will be, again, about the audience, the media. It could be even tied in with the news, for example, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. A few years ago, I uh, had done quite a lot with the Fox TV station here. I got pretty close to their um, their producer and um, whenever relationship kind of things came out, they would give me a call. And I hadn't heard from them for a while. And I happened to call them up with an idea to pitch to them. And they said, oh, my God, we're just we're so busy with this new story. And I said, well, what's the story? Oh, this this man had uh, uh, um, had a restraining order on him, broke through the restraining order, killed his family, shot himself. And I said, oh, well, I could just happen to talk about narcissistic relationships, which tie right into that. And, and, mm -hmm. and. And they pulled me in, and I was on TV that afternoon. So you have to be really open to um, what the news is doing. If you can get connected with anybody anywhere, that you can get a little chunk uh, opening of the door. Um, for example, uh, I got a connection to... Um, okay, hold, uh, hold on to that, because we have one final break here, and we'll come back with a connection. This is okay. Judith Krause. We've got Mary Jo Fay. We're talking about pitching, how to make it relevant and tied into current items that will enhance your credibility and expertise. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The free terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract. All equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at the or call him at 303-668-6828. The free terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both author you and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at the or call 303 668 and tell him you want the no contract author you deal. shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. 
You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, pitch. How do you become pitch perfect? And Mary Jo Fay was giving us an example, and I told her to hold that thought um, before we went to our final break. So you're back on, Mary Jo. Okie doke. Well, what I wanted to share with you was um, we've talked about pitching and not really talked about it in depth, but more about how we're going to present ourselves when we do get to pitch. Um, but pitching is so important, you can uh, do it a, a variety of ways. You can pick up the phone and call a local, local news station or whatever. Um, I got into a pretty good gig by following something called Harrow.com, which is help a reporter out where reporters come and ask for people to be experts on whatever they're talking about. And the, the one that particular day was um, some man over 50 wanted uh, a, a woman in his life that would have sex every day with him. And they were looking for people to talk about that. So I got on there. I got on their deal. I was one of the panelists. And now I made this connection. And then they called me again a little while later for something similar. I went on again. And then I started saying, have you ever thought about maybe covering the topic of a sexless marriage? Now, I'm pitching sexless marriage. I just put it a couple lines on my email, let it hang. And, boy, they were right back at me saying, when can you do that? So once you get your pitch door open and once you have some some track record behind you, you can sometimes direct these producers to take your story and run with it. You know, mm-hmm. they, they don't want to make up all these things themselves either. It takes a lot of work. So if you can have something that's concise and catchy, as we've been talking about, that catches their attention and makes them go, what? Wow, we mm-hmm. should be talking about that. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, why this is so important. And it includes being able to put sound bites together for these interviews. You should have certain lines of information that you just spew like uh, for me, um, men want to have men need a place. Women need a reason to have sex. Those kind of things. One liner. So people go, what? And that's how you have to keep pulling them in. As Judith was saying, reeling them in like you're fishing because you're the expert. You just have to condense it. So it's spicy and interesting and fast and quick and all of those things put together. And that's your big job because it's a big one right there. Get lots of people to help you listen to them, try them on. 
and see what uh, everybody else thinks because it's really hard when you're doing it for yourself. It's just we, it we don't, you know, have a big uh, ability to open our mind when it's our own stuff we've been living with for so long. It, it is, and and I'm gonna I'll give another example of that, and and you can do the redirect. That's I mean I I love redirects if you can hold on to it, and then actually you bring a, a whole nother show they hadn't thought about. And I remember years ago when my first book came out on women and why and how women undermine other women, and it was called Woman to Woman from Sabotage Support. And part of that, it was clear to me that I was going to have to learn how to do this stuff myself um, and going on. And literally, I would call producers or I, you know, whether it was radio or television, which it was what everyone did back in the late 80s, early 90s. And there wasn't Internet at that point for at least a level of what we did. Um, until really as we came into this last decade um, for marketing, for books and things. So my, my line was, and, and this is what's really important for all of you to understand there, that you have to learn to shut up and you don't keep talking. So my opening line was, there, someone was looking for something to do again about relationships and, and women's best friends. And so here, my pitch was this, contrary to popular belief, women discriminate, men don't. And then I would just shut up. And what it implied was, wait a minute, what, th this is so alien, tell me more. And then I would say, women target their own gender, men will shaft anyone. Okay, so my, the, the, the hook went out, I've got them, tell me more. If a woman is a saboteur, their style is covert, behind the scenes. Men are direct, blatant, even telling you the time and day they will shaft you. Tell me more. So mm -hmm. I took that all over the place. I mean, from four pages in People Magazine, from the New York Times to Time Magazine to, oh my God, the National Enquirer. It was everywhere. Um, it was an author's dream. But you've got to be willing to be controversial sometimes with your pitches. Wouldn't you say, Mary Jo? Oh, I'm dealing with that right now with Blatant Deception. It's a, it's a very dark, uh, dark book. I mean, it, it talks about a sexual predator. And you got to think that a sexual predator is going to do some sexual predatory things. And I've got people that I've, uh, you know, that love the book if they're into, um, you know, terrorizing things and they're into erotica and they're all into these kinds of things. But then the, there's those that haven't quite read it. I mean, it doesn't say Mary Poppins on the cover anywhere. So, yes, I have to keep coming up with things that help me define, first of all, who my audience is and really not worry about all those that aren't my audience. So when you're pitching to people... Um, I pitched this uh, 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 blog I put together sort of based on this book called The, the Dark Side of Dating, and I sent it to the Huff Post, where a friend of mine had a connection, and he came back and he said, Huff Post says, no, it'll make too many people afraid. And I'm like, well, this is going on out here. It's reality. Or that, you know, Do they not watch the news at night? But that's what you have to do is figure out who is in your court and who is in your genre and who is the type of person that you want to get this to because you don't want to send a you're an expert in headaches, you don't want to send that to, you know, a dentist. You want to reach somebody else that maybe a chiropractor that does, you know, work for people with migraines. So find your genre, find your people, find their language that you speak to them in the right voice. Um, it's just such a huge piece. You know, you think you write the book and that's the hard part and it's so wrong, so very wrong. That's the easy part. I'd rather go write six more books right now than market. But that's what we have to do to get noticed and to get into places and to get into Barnes and Noble and, and to get people to buy you uh, your book when they're Mr. FedEx dropping off at your house. So all sorts of ways to get noticed. And, and now it's your job to do it. And it's a hard job we don't want to do. But if, if you can't do it, hire somebody. There's plenty of us out here who are good at this particular thing, maybe not be good at another thing, and hire them and, and you know put the money into it and get it right. And, and that is right. And, you know, I, I need to say this because you're talking about find the right people to go to. It's also critical to know from the get go who are the wrong people to go to. Right. That, that you don't get into that room. You don't go down to that avenue. You don't show up to that group function that you know is the blatant wrong fit for either you your topic, your book, because you don't need to spend an evening defending yourself. And and uh, getting uh, creating hostility and people pissed off. I mean, it's just the wrong place to be. So go over your find your know where your crowd is. Know where your crowd is, and that's where you go to. Mm -hmm. Critical, critical for everybody. 
on that. All right, so I, I mean, I was sharing with Mary Jo well, that one of my favorite posters I have, and when I talk about pitches, you know, it's got to be catchy, catchy, catchy. And Mary Jo was talking about that she has hers is rhyming, you know, dating, mating, and relating, very rhyming that alliteration. But it's it's also really good to create a good visual if you can. And as she mm -hmm. said, fun. And I found a poster that I thought was the cat's meow, and it says, it's, it says literally on it, and it has little you know, funny little uh, glasses on it. And then you'll know who it is as soon as I say this. Harry Potter is a gateway drug to hard literature. And when you think about what Harry Potter did in roping in millions and millions of young people to the love of reading again. Um, and it, it was a classic, if you want to talk about a classic example of books fall open and people fill in, Harry Potter certainly fits that bill. Absolutely. So you you have those scenarios. All right, so Mary Jo, we've got a couple of minutes. What other little tidbits can we leave with our listeners in their setting up and working through this? I think to really go back to that basic um, structure that I had you fill in the blank on, <clears throat> how to get started. Hi, my name is blank. I help blank by showing them how to blank. So let's just play with a couple of those. Judith, how would that? How would you fill in your your lines here? You help blank with by showing them how to blank. Hi, I'm Judith Bryles. I'm a publishing and uh, a book publishing and author expert, and I show authors how to stay out of trouble. Oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> that trouble, <laughs> that trouble, man, that trouble was the best word in there. It made you go, oh my God, what trouble might there be? I never thought about trouble. Oh, so that's what trouble. well, there's publishing predators in your midst. <laughs> now, give us an example of when you were on the speaking circuit and you worked with nurses, how would it be different at that point? Ah, I'm Dr. Judith Browles, and my expertise is in conflict resolution and detoxifying toxic workplaces. Perfect. Right. So, but, there's, okay. yeah. so now, when Mary Jo asked me that, I've done that before. And, and the thing is, this takes practice. You all need to understand this. This is not something you're going to get in two seconds. It takes practice. That's right. And that's so. why in the, at the extravaganza, we're going to have people um, test out a few different things with people at your table so that you can get input from other people, especially other people you might not have normally, you know, been in their genre. But it might be sometimes when you're not, it's an even more easy way to look at it objectively and go, oh, that just doesn't make any sense at all. How about this? Or you yep, get some exactly. comedian at your table and the comedian, you know, happens to give you a line that fits with something else. So um, and, it's brainstorming. It's going to be You want to be open and receptive. Well, we're, we have to wrap up. Thank you, Mary Jo, for being with us today. We look you're forward welcome. to hearing you at the extravaganza. Everyone, go, 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 go. AuthorU.org and get signed up. And a quick review, your 30-second pitch is the key to who and what you and your book are. So you've got to test it out and find the one that fits best and know that your pitch is your brand and your commercial. They're crucial to the marketing of you. I'm Judith Bryles. We'll be back with you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles.